So thank you for coming and I'm going to um, talk about a new field of medicine. It's called regenerative medicine. And back when I was training, which was probably close to 20 years ago, this, this field didn't exist. This is a new field in the last five or six years. And what we deal with is repairing the damaged tissue, damage caused by injury or by disease. And um, it's becoming fairly obvious that there's two things that the body can do. When tissue gets damaged, either by, again, an injury or by a disease, the body can decide to repair that injury or it can form a scar. And if it forms a scar, well, usually the tissues don't work very well and people are left with disabilities or, or, or problems. If the body repairs itself, then people are back to normal. And the question is that, or the, the ideas that have come over the last um, five or six years is, is some insights into how this repair occurs. The repair requires two, two things. It requires cells or stem cells which can localize to the site of injury and help repair the tissue. But it also requires environmental signals or clues in the environment to tell the stem cells how to behave start dividing, turn into to, uh, a, a differentiated tissue that has specific functions and localize in certain places. And that environmental signal can come from scaffolding or, or st structural members of the tissue, or it can come from accessory cells, helper cells that then produce chemical products that then uh, are signal to the stem cells what they should become. Uh, and so I want to talk a bit, little bit about the, the uh, components in a, a bit more detail. And so you may, may have heard or you may not have heard what a, what a stem cell is. And when I think about stem cells, I think about them as the seeds or the roots of a, of a tissue. And they exist in all sorts of different uh, organisms from the lowly, uh, the first multicellular organisms that live in pond scum up to humans. And these stem cells have similar properties, and, and they're listed here. They can grow into lots of different types of tissue, and we call that pluripotency. They can regenerate new stem cells, and so that's called self-renewal. And they can divide a lot. And so, for instance, in the human body, bone marrow stem cells, the bone marrow stem cells that produce blood, a few of those every day allow us to produce on the order of billions of, of new red blood cells and white blood cells that circulate. And so, so they have this immense proliferative potential. And finally, the useful thing about stem cells is that we can transplant them from one person to another. Stem cells are kind of bland, much like seeds. So, so where um, a, a plant or an organism would have leaves and stems and branches and, and even the stems have bark and, and the inner heartwood, stem cells kind of look like nondescript uh, cells. But these cells can then give rise to daughter cells that have all sorts of specialized functions. And the daughter cells themselves look different. The thing about stem cells is that they're immortal. Because a stem cell can produce a new stem cell, which can produce more new stem cells, stem cells can, can exist in the body. And even though one, once they divide, there are, are different kinds of cells that are, are their daughter cells, if one of them becomes a new stem cell, that line is propagated, much like a family name would be propagated through the generations. And, and it becomes immortal. The daughter cells, however, oftentimes turn into specialized tissues, and these cells uh, develop genetic programs that control their reproduction, and they can only divide a certain number of times. And so they end up being mortal. And so the whole purpose of stem cells is to provide a fail-safe mechanism against uncontrolled replication of cells. And uncontrolled replication of cells leads to cancer. And so it's a, a way that the body has evolved over, over the, the generations to protect itself against forming cancer. 
there are many types of stem cells and so for instance in the human we have organ specific stem cells in the adult we have brain stem cells and heart stem cells and skin stem cells and and stem cells in all these other organs in uh, a fetus there are are certain stem cells that circulate through the baby's uh, uh, blood vessels are, and can be isolated from the cord blood and we call those umbilical cord blood and we're using many of these kinds of stem cells in treatments nowadays. You may have heard on the news about embryonic stem cells. These are derived from an early embryo. They take cells from this little glob of, of cells in the in the embryo and these cells have the unique property of becoming any kind of tissue that exists in the human body. And so that's why everybody's very excited about using embryonic stem cells uh, for research purposes. In the bone marrow, and, and here's a, a photomicrograph of the bone marrow, it kind of, these are fat cells, these big white areas, and these are the bone marrow cells. But in this region next to the bone live the blood stem cells or hematopoietic stem cells. And these stem cells give rise to all the cells in the blood, all our immune system cells, and the cells that line our, our blood vessels called endothelial cells. But it lives in harmony with the second kind of stem cell that we call mesenchymal stem cells. And this mesenchymal stem cell can give rise to tendon and cartilage and fat and bone, but has also been shown to have the ability to turn into other tissues. And people are starting to test these cells, the mesenchymal stem cells, in clinical practice right now. But we've been using hematopoietic stem cells for bone marrow transplants for about 50 years now. There's a new kind of stem cell on the block, and, and these are, are uh, called induced pluripotent stem cells, or IPS cells. And this um, kind of cell is, is a, a man-made creation. And so what um, researchers have discovered, they can take adult cells from any cell in the body, and oftentimes they use uh, skin cells called fibroblasts, which produce um, the collagen and, and live, give the structure to the, the, the skin. And they can um, put in four different genes into these cells. And those four different genes reprogram the, the cell from, becoming, from being a fibroblast into a cell that has unique properties that are very, very similar to an embryonic stem cell. And the hope is, over time, that we can take these IPS cells that have the property that they can become all sorts of different tissues if they're instructed properly, and we can give them the right instructions and they can differentiate into specific organs. So we could take a cell from a patient's skin and we can um, transfect it or, or genetically reprogram it with these four genes to become new stem cells and then we can give it other instructions and make it become a heart or a liver or a pancreas in order to transplant it into a patient with problems in those organs.